Oh, if you don't have a game plan, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. And there you go. I, well, I, I didn't for a long time, and then I saw her, and I had to come up with one. So, uh, so Carl Anthony Towns' mom passed away from COVID-19. Obviously, we want to use that as an example of how serious this situation is. So let's move into exactly what's going on with Dallas Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott, who is not social distancing in the slightest from anybody. And it's okay if you're... like it, I'm not going to say it's okay. Let me take that back. Um, if you're doing that, that's one thing. To publicize it is a whole other thing, right? It, obviously, he's got Twitter posts and everything else where he's out. He's working out with all these different guys and whatnot. And he... He ain't exactly staying six feet apart from anybody. So, he's got all that stuff going on. But TMZ reported over the weekend that he held a catered birthday party for one of his friends, which was also attended by star running back Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, The story includes purported photos and videos of Prescott's home, including an intimate dining setup where the chairs are definitely not six feet apart. Um, You know, blah, blah, blah. A source close to Prescott denies that he threw a crowded party Though it is worth noting the person did not deny Prescott hosted a gathering of some sort. Uh, Forbes has got a big article on it, and it's just basically talking about how how selfish Prescott is being in these situations in, in, in this current time in our country because it, the cops showed up, and they obviously it's all voluntary compliance. Right now, they're not going to write him a citation, anything like that. And obviously... If you're the cops in Dallas and you show up at the Cowboys starting quarterback's house, you're not exactly going to uh, voluntarily release information unless you're a Steelers fan or whatever, a Redskins or Eagles fan. You're not going to volunteer information uh, that could possibly hurt your quarterback. But uh, so far as I understand, there's not a deal done with Dak, right? No, like he he's supposedly franchised, or or he's they're well, working they on a franchise, the franchise tag. tag. I don't know that he signed it. He had I, I don't think he signed it yet, but they were back at the uh, at the table discussing a long term deal. But th- my well, you question can tear is the franchise tag up if you make a real deal. That's yeah. fine. Uh, but it, here's here's the deal. Uh, my question with all of this is: Do you want a guy like that to be the leader of your football team. It, it, if he's making these kind of decisions in a very serious situation, with, and I understand how talented and all that, like I, I get the talent, I get all this kind of stuff, but it, it's the decision-making, right? That's what makes a quarterback. That's what makes Tom Brady as opposed to uh, name whoever, Joe Schmo, right? Like, it, do you want that guy leading your your franchise? Okay, okay. I take almost every opportunity I'm afforded to make fun of the Cowboys and Agreed. take shots at them. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. And, you, and you I'm can... also taking this COVID-19 very seriously. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you that I don't, I don't know that one, I want him to take it more seriously than he is. I have a completely different opinion about that than, I don't know that that has anything to do with his decision-making ability on a football field. Okay, there have been lots of guys that were knuckleheads that could sling it and and made plenty good decisions. Okay, slinging it. Dak hasn't proven to be a problem person per se for the most part. He's just not taking this serious, and he happens to live in a state where it's probably not frowned upon, like Mississippi, where he's from. Actually, yeah, <laughs> where nobody really takes it seriously either. So I, I get that his upbringing and his surroundings kind of perpetuate the fact that this is not that big of a deal. We've been all locked up for three weeks, going on four weeks or whatever it is now. So just do whatever you want. It's your birthday kind of thing. I don't know if that has anything to do with him being a quarterback. Would I pay him $40 million a year? Hell no. But I wouldn't have done that before this. Uh, Michael okay. jumped in on Twitch. He said, I don't think he's worth that money anyway, but it's his life. I get he's a celebrity, but it's his life. He's taking his own risks, so I judge. Um, he's not taking just his own risks. That's the problem. That, see, that's the reason the problem. we all got to stay in is because it's not just taking your own risk. You're taking everybody else's as well. I take it seriously because I don't know who else I'm affecting. You, you brought up the fact that you put on a mask today because – it protects other people. You wearing yeah. that mask doesn't really protect you, but it does protect everybody around you. Right. That's courtesy from you to them. And, and I'm sure 
they all appreciate it. And I'm also sure that in Mississippi at the Lowe's, our Home Depot in Mississippi, the people that are there right now look at you half crazy because the only people wear a mask in there are 70 year olds coming in to get mulch for the flower beds. There was not many people wearing them. That's, and, and that's just, that's just it is nobody else has really cared about the people around them. That's um, a Matt, Matt, by the way, from, or not from, but he's, he's living in Texas. He said it hasn't been as bad, uh, as bad here. Um, but that, that's the thing. We don't know who has it and who doesn't like it. it yeah, you I just have, know, I have you're an not opinion gonna... about this. That's it's going to come across political, but it's not a political thing. It's more of a generational thing. Okay. You, you and I, Huey, the same thing. We, we fall like we're the very, very back end of Gen Z's and the very beginning of millennials. We're probably more millennial than we are Gen Z, oh, whether and, we like it or not. Yeah. I mean, we're we're older than millennials. I think what? We're not. We're really not. We're really not. Like 35, 36, 37, which is what we are, is the back end of millennials because we're the same range difference from Gen Z's. We're, we're three to four years away from kind of both of them. We're a man without an island. But what I'm trying to say is, is it's the, it's not millennials. It's the Gen Xers, it's Dax world. Yeah. That these are the people that are still going to spring break. They're still going. Like if you went to California right now, beaches are all closed, but it doesn't matter. You go out there on a beautiful day on Saturday, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts that are all based out of LA and these guys are like, we drive up and down the strip just to give us something to do. We're in our cars and the beaches are just packed with surfers. Oh, yeah. Some of them. Now, some of them, the police are guarding very heavily and running people off, but they just run like two miles down the road and then they get on that beach and you just got to keep chasing away. These are the people that don't care. And they're also the ones that are continuing to spread this stuff. Right. Right. Because the old people who are getting sick and who are dying aren't, aren't the ones going out. It's these people going out and they're going home. Okay. Here's, here's my thing. Hey, you're, you're right about millennials, by the way, in 2014, us PIRG described millennials as those born between 1983 and 2000. So yeah, that's all right. So Michael, all 82 ish. Michael said, uh, how old is everyone? I'm 34. Uh, Matt, we're 37. Matt was 82. Uh, who who keeps jumping in the comments? I was born in January '83, and I'm '82. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, so we're all, so we're, but I, but I'm the very back end of '82. Like I said, we're all the same. But here's my here's my argument: these people who are living life at a very risque way of living life, right? Now, now I've I've made it clear if you listen to this show long enough, I'm pretty moderate. Okay, there's a lot of things I'm very liberal on. There's a few things that I'm fiscally a little more conservative than, but I don't, I don't know that I'm, I'm super conservative about a lot of things. I'm not offended by virtually anything. That's a broad brush painting. Yeah. Okay. You personally attack me. It'll hurt my feelings. I'd get offended. Yeah. But, but any, any broad brush, any joke that might offend my people or whatever, as long as it's not a personal attack, there's nothing that really offends me. These people that don't care, I'm doing a long, a bad job of getting getting around this. These people that don't care are also the same people that were freaking out because right wing people were going to their college campus and giving speeches, and they needed safe spaces. Yeah, and, and I that's... think it's really ironic that seven months ago, a year ago, two years ago, these people all needed safe spaces in college because of ideas and words that were being brought there when the whole purpose of going to college is to challenge ideas. Now I'm a firm believer of challenging every idea. Oh yeah. I hope people challenge my ideas. Well, it's partly why do, it's why we do this show because it, you and I have different opinions on, on a lot of a things. Lot of now things. we do agree yeah. on a lot as well, but we, we do disagree on a lot of things and, and you and I both thought when we started this podcast that it would be good for yeah. us to get in here and hear different viewpoints. And, and that's why we bring on different guests. You know, I just to, find it weird yeah. that the mentality of the people that needed safe spaces from words and ideas, now when we need them to lock themselves in their safe space, refuse. It is strange. Isn't is that strange. interesting? Uh, the Brown Yeti jumped in. We, we've got a 21-year-old that listens to us. Hey, so, there we go. This is the guy what, we're talking about. 20, uh, Are you staying inside? Twenty. <laughs> hey, the Brown Yeti, if, uh, if you're staying inside, let us know. We would love to hear it uh, <laughs> because... Yeah, we that that's what we've been told to do. That's what we're doing. That's you know, 
it, I don't think it's I don't think it's that hard. Like it. I, oh, let me boring. rephrase that. Now we, you and I differ on that. It, you do much better at home than I do. I, I do, but not when I am forced to be here. But I'm really. All the time. I would tell you, Gary, you're probably an easier person to live he, with. Uh, than I. He said he's working, um, but then right. otherwise going home. So there you go. There you go, and that makes sense. You got an essential person. Yep. There you go. So that I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, we've got a lot of buddies that are essential workers and, and et cetera, and we, we appreciate all of them. I've got buddies that are nurses and uh, that work in doctor's offices, et cetera. I've got a, an eye doctor friend that is not doing as much business right now, but he's, uh, he's still handling emergencies and whatnot. So that kind of stuff, very serious. But, uh, yeah, let's see. He said, uh, I'm about to be off for a month, but I'll be in the woods. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Let's uh let's close out the show. We we've gone a long time today, but I 